Good morning. Um, here it is. Oh my goodness, it is uh, Tuesday. These guys were nine weeks old on Saturday. Puppy number one went home on Sunday. Um, puppy number two and three are left here. Uh, number two will be going home the 21st of October. Uh, she got a really nice home. I'm very pleased with who purchased her. Uh, I'm very pleased with who purchased puppy number one. Um, both homes have stay-at-home moms and children in the home. Um, and other dogs. Small dogs. So that's really good. <laughs> yeah. That's really good. Hello, Billy's coming in. Oh, you're so beautiful. This is number two. And she's going home the 21st. Her family came for a little boy, and I thought they would be taking number three here. Um, and they ended up with Daddy getting his heart won over by number two, and so they left having uh, made a claim to puppy number two, the little girl. Yeah, Mommy's going to bite you if you keep trying to nurse. She's done with all that business. Um, she's just in visiting. This is puppy number three. Boom, come here, you little dickens. Is that a cutie or what? Oh my gosh, that's a cute baby. I know you love your baby, don't you? You love your baby. <laughs> um, this is Pepper. This is Mommy. Um, so let's talk about breeding. It's, um, it's not to be taken lightly. And, uh... I'm sure some people have looked at our ad. We, we didn't have to advertise with our last litter. Uh, with this litter, I have advertised. Um, and we get 2,000 for our, for our babies. And there's a, a lot of reasons for that. One, we have a lot of money invested in mommy and daddy. Yeah. And, um, and that investment is to make sure that they are, that both parents are as healthy as they can be. Um, we have the DNA test done through Embark, and um, if anybody shows any sign of sending on um, a disease, uh, then they can't breed. And if they have only one variant of something, that's another story, as long as we breed with with uh, their partner that doesn't have a variant of it, they won't pass it to the babies. Um, we don't have to worry about that. Um, because we want, we want our puppies. <laughs> hey, 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 you, you guys are not going to camera. Hey, 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 that's a little rough. That's a little rough. Um, yeah, we don't want anybody passing anything on. Um, we want to to make sure that these puppies go to quality homes, um, and by that I mean people who understand they may invest two thousand dollars in a crossbred dog. Um, but if they're getting the uh, the, <laughs> um, the best potential to have a dog that lives. Um, to their life expectancy, and between the Havanese and the Shih Tzu, uh, these guys should live. <laughs> these guys should live between. Uh, I, I will be shocked if anybody doesn't get 15 years out of their puppies. Uh, but stuff happens, and you never know. You know, life life happens with dogs just like it does with people, and you never know. Um, we just lost our big guy. The last big dog we would own was a schnoodle. Um, it's a 65 pounder, not a, a super large dog, just a, a big dog. But now I'm too old to care for big dogs. So we knew when we got him, he would be our last big one. I was hoping for 15 years. We got 13 years, eight and a half months. Middle of August this year, we had to have him put down. He uh, developed a basal cell tumor that was inoperable, and um, it just got the best of him, and we had to put him down. But 13 years, eight and a half months, that's pretty darn good for a big dog. 
Um, and he was an excellent dog. And he was a crossbreed. He was a giant schnauzer and standard poodle. And my golly, he was a great dog. Um, and didn't get either any of the diseases that either one of those breeds um, has a tendency to, to get or develop or whatever. Um, so yeah, we invest in, um, in a lot of pre-breeding testing, um, a lot of temperament testing. Uh, <laughs> Mommy, are you out of patience? Um, you wanted to come in. You asked to come in and visit. Um, and so, um, we're sending you puppies that have really good temperaments, yes, and they've been conditioned for all kinds of things. This is the no bite pad. No biting, you bite that. Yeah, you don't bite me, you bite that. No, you bite this. You bite that. Or you bite mommy and she'll bite you back. She's dumb with you guys. Um, so, um, this is our second litter. Um, Pepper is our second breeder. We uh, purchased um, a second hand breeder, I suppose you call her. Um, our dog Ricky, who is our pet, and she will stay with us until the day she dies. Um, she had been owned by two breeders previous to us. Um, the first breeding situation doesn't sound like it was a very good one, where she basically spent most of her life in, in stackable kennels. And the second breeder, um, who doesn't do that sort of thing, um, didn't find her to be the easiest dog to deal with. So we ended up buying her. Um, we invested about $2,500. Veterinarian said, um, yeah, you've got three litters in this, left in this dog, um, if that's what you want to do. Um, but we, she got pregnant once with the same daddy as these guys. She's a, sh she's a Shih Tzu. Um, and our only, our only male is, uh, is our stud Basil. He's a Havashu. Um, and she and Basil had six absolutely gorgeous puppies. And Ricky, um, Ricky went through a hard time uh, with that many puppies. And she ended up at the ER with eclampsia and, um, it was just hard on her. And when I took her in for her post, part of visit, the vet said, well, she's definitely got two more litters left in her. It depends on what you want to do. And I said, well, I think she's exhausted. Let's just get her fixed and retire her. And so that's what we did. And Pepper was almost old enough to have puppies. We had already gotten her to replace Ricky. Um, it takes about two years to get, get a, a breeder up to a good age to have puppies. And, um, and pass all their tests and make sure they're healthy and they have good temperament and all that stuff that goes with it. It's a little bit of work. Um, so, um, <laughs> yeah, Ricky is still with us. She's, she's uh, the queen of the castle. She's loving, oh, you just peed on the floor. I'm talking about how sweet you are and you just peed on the floor. Um, she's, she's a good dog. Uh, she has some, um, some fear issues uh, that were caused environmentally and not genetically. Um, she's a good dog. Pepper is a fabulous dog. Um, she's well-rounded. She's um, super good temperament. Um, everybody loves her. Puppy number, went home, number one that went home this weekend was purchased when she was a puppy. Um, a fellow that I've known for over 30 years uh, came by to visit and fell in love with Pepper as a puppy. And he, he wanted me to, he said, can I have your dog? <laughs> I said, no, but as long as she passes her test, she'll be a breeder. And uh, a year and a half or so, um, maybe we'll have puppies. And he said, first pick a first litter. So when she was pregnant, he got first pick a first litter. And that little baby went home uh, Sunday. And it's lonesome without him. Lonesome without him. You guys don't care. I care. Grampy cares. Yes. So, um, 
when when folks are wondering, um, I, I see people putting comments on different sales sites, you know, and uh, people are selling dogs for enough money to make you think their gold, their fur is gold, and their teeth are diamonds, and and that's not the case. You wanna you wanna charge enough money that you know your your puppies are going to good solid homes, and part of going to a good solid home is the potential new owners are looking at uh, did they have DNA tests done, uh, have they been conditioned for various conditions in the home, or um, are they going to be fearful of the 4th of July, are they going to be afraid to go outside, are they going to be able to ride in the car without um, panicking. Uh, and you no, know, you don't bite me, you bite this, you bite that. Um, and so a, a good, a, d a decent breeder, um, I consider us good breeders, we're new in the business, but we've fostered quite a few puppy litters for other breeders. So we have a little bit of experience. You know, that's where most of the damage in this room came from. <laughs> it's having puppies in here that got a little a little ambitious. Um, so yeah, these guys, uh, they start with early neurological stimulation, day three to day 16. You did that, yeah. You passed with flying colors. There's no test. Um, they, um, they are handled every day and played with every day and um, we do things, uh, we try to introduce them to just regular household sounds. Of course they hear the vacuum and their floor is mopped every day and they know that they're big enough. Oh, there's your bowl. Um, they of course try to help. But this is uh, part of making sure that they're not uh, startled easily. Um, at this little bowl and little miss number two here she uh, it's one of her favorite toys she likes to carry it around the room and drop it um, but they um, my husband has a tractor um, uh, Ford Jubilee um, real old one it's almost antique um, and they hear that, and they hear the, the riding lawnmower, the little lawn tractor, and the push lawnmower, and the kitchen noises, and we own six dogs, we have six pets. <laughs> yes, you're one of them, huh? Yes. Um, and so they're used to those dogs. Uh, one of our neighbors <laughs> likes to target shoot a lot. And so they hear, uh, they hear guns. Uh, he's got exploding targets, so sometimes it's really loud. It doesn't bother them a bit. Um, these guys will be. Um, we strive to to raise some incredibly confident little animals. <laughs> so, will you stop fighting with your mother? Stop. Here, here, show them this. Um, <laughs> Pepper, come here. Let me let me put you out. Um, yeah, she's still trying to nurse her. Um, so, and you come away from the door. No, mommy's going out. Mommy's going out. So, um, they they will be if if someone were to want to make them a service dog or. Um, an emotional support dog or something like that, um, then they would qualify to be trained for that um, because they're not startled easily. They're not uh, they're not frightened of pretty much anything. Um, uh, so that would be one of our goals, um, and um, one of our. For ownership, our, we hold goals of hoping that um, someone in the family is a telecommuter, whether they're a single person that, that works from home, or a family where one one of the parents works from home, or one of the parents uh, only works in the home. Um, 
like a stay-at-home mom or a stay-at-home dad. Um, both of the puppies who have sold went to homes where the mothers are stay-at-home mothers. And that's not to say they don't work. <laughs> I know they work. We've raised a few kids. Um, and, and they both home school. So the dogs, plus they both have other dogs, small dogs. Um, and so uh, the puppies will always have um, companionship. And, and, and they, they need that. There are a lot of dogs in this house. I consider six dogs a lot of dogs. Uh, there are a lot of dogs in this house, and um, and just my husband and I, but um, they're both fully comfortable with males or females. Um, my husband volunteers a big man voice here and there so that the dogs aren't frightened by that, because <laughs> that comes out. Um, the grandkids come up. Oh, I have a rogue fly. The grandkids come up. Uh, whenever they can to play with the babies which of course is good did we get it i don't know if we got it oh maybe we did um that thing's been flying around since yesterday i haven't been able to get it don't don't eat that um well, i suppose you could eat it it's not gonna hurt you um so they, um, my husband, when he gets home from work, they, the puppies have leash training and harness training, so they're ready to, well, it's not training, it's conditioning. They're too young to train for much of anything, but they're conditioned to be trained. Um, they both are more than happy to go potty while on the leash, uh, all three of them were. Um, they are pretty good about responding to uh, come, uh, although I'm, I can't, I would never um, say they're trained. <laughs> um, I don't think training really starts with a dog until they're about three months, so they have a little ways to go, but they're certainly conditioned. Um, they've each had two baths already, and they're due for another one. Look at you, you got your head. Um, yeah, they chew on each other a lot, and so they get caca fur. They get brushed every day. Uh, once a week, they get the uh, exam. We sniff those little ears. Let me see your ears. You got good ears? You got good ears? Let me see that. Oh, they smell delicious. They smell delicious. Yes. And I hold their little chin so that when somebody has to do face work, they're used to having their chin hairs held. Their feet are clipped. Little pads. Toenails are clipped once a week, if, as long as they need it, and they generally do. High knees are checked. Um, they're good about laying on their back for you and cooperating. Oh, and there goes that Harley kick. Nice job. Oh, that's another thing they're used to is motorcycles. Um, and my husband's got a big loud Harley that, that they, uh, they hear start periodically. Um, so yeah, they're, so far they are very confident, they are um, responsive, they're interactive, <laughs> they are such good babies. And, and that's what we're trying to do, we're trying to produce puppies um, that are confident, happy, healthy, um, come from... Uh, from dogs with clear health and the DNA tests are good and um, we want these dogs to live a long, long time for you. Uh, yes. And to be an asset and not a liability. Huh? Yes. Asset, not a liability. Um, so, um, oh, and they're big puppies, in case you hadn't noticed. They're pretty big <laughs> for being little hover shoes. <laughs> they're pretty big. I don't know why they're so big. Uh, Ricky's puppies were pretty much regular size, and she's a Shih Tzu, and, and, uh, and the daddy of those was Basil, the same daddy. 
Um, but these puppies were big enough that I had the ultrasound done two weeks before she was due. And the ultrasound tech said, wow, those are big puppies. And the next week she had her x-ray so we would know how many puppies there were um, and how big they were. And at that point we scheduled a, a C-section because they're just really big puppies and, and Pepper was not going to be able to pass them naturally. So we just went with a C-section, um, which was interesting, my first. Uh, never saw a human one, never been involved with one, never, never, never. Um, but I had a lot of help from uh, one of our neighbors down the road who breeds French Bulldogs, and so he gave me lots of advice and, and, um, and lots of information to have my confidence level up. And everything went fine, and the puppies are fine. And um, Mommy uh, has her postpartum, postpartum um, in two weeks, and we'll make sure that she healed up nicely and she's doing okay. And ask the veterinarian when the recommended next breeding would be. Look at you. Oh, 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 oh so noisy you are. Um, so that's, that's, um, it costs a lot of money to breed dogs if you're breeding them, uh, if you're a decent breeder, uh, you're taking care of them, they're seeing the vets, your adult dogs are, uh, routinely seeing a vet and vaccinations are current and, um, their teeth are well cared for, uh, and these guys have great teeth. Both her mom and dad have beautiful teeth, and they have beautiful teeth. Um, so if you're if you're really taking care of your animals, this is not an inexpensive business uh, to be in, and uh, it will probably take two more litters of puppies before we even cover the cost of startup. Um, we bought two females earlier this year. Uh, one purebred Havanese and one purebred Shih Tzu. And we've got already a little over $5,000 invested in those. So you can imagine, it takes a little bit of time to, um, to get set up, um, to have the time, the energy, the willingness <laughs> uh, to really take care of these, these puppies and, and their parents. Their parents need quality care too. So, um, just thought I'd give you all a heads up um, and uh, maybe answer any questions that anyone might have uh, about it. Maybe you'd be interested in becoming a breeder. Um, i can give you some, some pointers. Uh, the first pointer would be, if you think you might want to be a breeder, foster a breeder's uh, dog first. Uh, there are quite a few breeders out there that look for foster parents uh, to take care of the dogs and then um, I've seen some of them where the deals are you foster them through having their puppies and stuff and then um, when they're done breeding, when they're, re when they're retired, then you can have the dog. You can have the, the dog and you already know the dog, you know how it's cared for, you know a lot about the dog. Um, but that's a good way to, to see if it's something that you can or want to do and to get to know a breeder that, that you can uh, learn a lot from or <laughs> get good advice from. Um, so yeah, that's, that's our video for this morning, um, you two crazies. Are you getting bored? Are you getting bored this morning? We'll go outside as soon as the sun is up. Yeah. It's not up high enough yet. Not up high enough yet. Get nice and warm out there. We're having a beautiful September here, 2022. It's supposed to be another... Uh, the third El Nina, I guess it's called, in a row. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Maybe we'll have a cold, wet winter. But so far, I haven't had to turn the heat on, except for the puppy's little heater at night, because it does get cold at night. So, um, that's that. Um, 
Send me a comment, send me a question, send me whatever. And have a great, great week.